right, um, today is day two. So we're gonna talk about what we did in class today very briefly, not like yesterday's 25 minute video. We'll try and trim this way down because essentially we're gonna be repeating a lot of the same exercises uh, and improving upon them each day while introducing a new topic each day. Um, so let's get rolling with that. Uh, first, I'd like you to look at your resources on your Canvas page. If you are a West student, it's gonna be uh, music grade seven or seventh grade music, something in that format, or eighth grade or sixth grade. If you're a Foothills Community School student, it's going to be, I believe it's FCS Music is the title you'll find on your Canvas. So let's switch views here. And we're gonna look from student view so we see what you see. Uh, if you're FCS, this banner up here is gonna be different. Um, all the West ones have a similar banner with a different title up top. Most of you have figured this out because I've seen you in my Google Meets, which we'll be taking attendance on pretty shortly. Now that everybody's got it. Um, you'll notice we have down here, Music Elective Lesson 1. At the end of today, I'll be posting a page for Music Elective Lesson 2 uh, with a video to accompany it, which is this video. So let's click on Music Elective Lesson 1. I encourage you to try this as well because we have quite a few resources available for you guys now uh, for these recurring lessons. Uh, number one here is yesterday's video. This introduces lots of things you'll use over and over. If you're working on naming notes, which we call Pitch ID, this is a video I made a few years ago which works really, really well. Uh, I think it's like three minutes or something. It's not long at all, just check it out. Um, you have a link to Pitch ID practice for line notes. Let's look at that. There it is, and you can practice to your heart's content. Every good boy does fine. We did some of that today. Uh, e being the bottom one, every good boy does fine. And of course, we also have, let me slide this over, space notes. All, sorry, <laughs> I was thinking bass clef. Face, F, A, C, and E, so that'd be an A. We went over that yesterday. You have this for practicing. We have line and space notes together. It just means you have to first say, oh, is it a line note or a space note? It's a line note. Every good boy does fine. Oh, that's a space note, F-A-C-E, from the face rule, and so on. Always identify the rule first out loud to yourself, uh, if you are that awesome. It'll keep you straight. On Rhythm Trainer, I have six different pictures here, just kind of, it looks crazy, but all you have to do is make sure the same things are checked. I can't just design it for you and send it to you. So if we click on the rhythmtrainer.com, we want to make this screen look like this first one. A, slow, on, and those two boxes. A, slow, on, those two boxes. It was explained yesterday, blah, blah, blah. You can check this, and the B version is kind of a backwards version of that. Um, so those are the resources available, and this is going to be the longest video because it introduces you to so many of the things we do each day that we're just going to go, hey, do your circles today, as opposed to actually explaining the entire activity. So let's minimize this and get back on the things here. Great. So um, today we're going to talk briefly about sound. Sound is vibration of molecules in the air. Something contacts something else or causes some sort of commotion, um, and that translates into waves of molecules bumping into each other until it reaches your eardrum, which kind of decodes it for your brain, and your brain registers it um, as whatever it perceives it as. Um, so it's a vibration of molecules in the air. It does travel like a wave, like ripples uh, in a pool, uh, and it is pressure. Actually, if this was up and running, I would show you that these, that's my daughter, she's very cute. That's an old picture, she's taller now. Um, these speaker cones that produce the sound in a speaker, um, if they're moving at one hertz, I like to do this with the band kids every year, you see the speaker cone moving forward and back, da, 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 once per second, because it compresses or pushes out some pressure and then it decompresses or pulls back. And that's one hertz, or one cycle per second. Two cycles per second would be da, 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 da. 
And this speaker is small, so where you can't actually see that speaker, the round part, the cone, um, you can't hear anything because it's too small to produce something at that slow or that low of a uh, frequency. Um, so those slow cycles won't make any sound out of a tiny speaker. It has to have higher pitch to make that work. Um, let's take a quick break and do some conducting. You remember this from yesterday? So I would do You can try this with your neighbors, you can try it with any friends that are around, so long as you are social distancing and saying, staying safe. Um, also, we have triangle square, remember, it goes like this. Triangle on one side, square on the other. Start at the top, both hands, you start going down. So we go one motion, and that's what you end up with. To build your way up to this point, I recommend always starting with one hand or the other. So just the right hand, just the left hand, um, same as yesterday. If you get to be really awesome at this really fast, uh, feel free to switch it. Put the square in the left and the triangle in the right. And then relearn. Do the triangle. Do the square. Put them together slowly. And so forth until you get comfortable with the opposite, and that's going to expand your wiring in your brain just a little bit more. Uh, we have opposing circles, of course. Practice just the right hand, just like practicing just the square or just the triangle. Try and get it as round as possible. Left hand comes towards you, right hand goes away, of course, just like yesterday. And then you slowly put them together to where they meet at the top and the bottom and are hopefully making a somewhat circular shape and it's the same circle, imaginary circle in the air. Cool. So, sound is a vibration of molecules. Uh, you perceive it in your eardrum. It moves at about the speed. Let's draw a quick and dirty eight football fields per second. So, if you're down here, you set up a firework, it's going to reach your buddy down here, it's going to reach their ears after a second. It's going to take one second of time between the start of the sound here and it getting to here. It takes time to travel because it has to have motion through the air of the molecules. Now, if your buddy's not here and you're by yourself and you have no friends, but there is a wall here, and you make that sound down here, it's going to take one second to get to the wall and one second to echo back. So from the time you make the sound, it'll travel eight football fields and back in two seconds. One second here, one second back. Um, travel, sound travels differently through different things. In outer space, it doesn't because there's nothing to create the ripples. Um, we have lots of molecules in the air here. Up there, there's really nothing to travel through. Um, to transmit that vibration. Uh, underwater it travels at different speeds, in the ground it travels at different speeds, but because we're connecting this to music, we're just going to talk about in the air. So there is a sound delay as it travels. Uh, if you move this wall here, halfway, then it'd be half a second, half a second. So it'd be one second away. Uh, one second echo. Um, if you moved it even closer, it would be a half second echo, and then a quarter of a second echo. Um, and as you get closer, it gets to be more instant. Um, I want to switch views here. Um, so now that we know what hertz are, <laughs> roughly, how many cycles per second, uh, we are going to pull up something. And I will have this linked under lesson two for you. I love this site. It's meant uh, for a medical purpose, treating something called tinnitus, but it just produces pure tones, which really lets us play with some of the physics here. And again, you can get to this, uh, it should be under music elective lesson two when we get there. All right. So we're going to produce a tone 
at 440 hertz. That is the tune that that is the the pitch at which an orchestra tunes. Not particularly fun to listen to. Let's set up another one. This one, if it will load properly. There we go. Is going to be at 441 hertz. Just slightly higher in pitch. The cone moves one more time, a 441st time to a 440th time in a second. Back and forth, compression, decompression. So what you should be hearing if the technologies work properly through this video. You should hear this pulsing. Because they're one cycle or one hertz apart, their out of tuneness ends up creating a one second phasing of the two, where they separate and they come back together every second. When they come back together, it multiplies the volume, and when they're opposite each other, it actually subtracts the volume. So let's change this. That's one second apart, or one hertz, one cycle. Change that to 442. Now it's two per second. Just a fun little thing. If you've played uh, instruments before, uh, you might recognize that little wobbly sound as being out of tune, and that's exactly what it is. It's the pitches almost phasing together, but not quite. One, two, three, one, two, three, one, two, three, one, two, three. And you don't really need to fully understand this. I just kind of want to start to visualize what sound is and what pitch and tuning are for you. Um, so let's get back over here. Da -da -da. Do another little activity here. Um, so don't forget the pie game. Pie game is very important. We're going to keep building on this each day. So quick examples of stuff that you'll see. You will see pies. Pie. Pie. You will see apples. And again, you can go to the Rhythm Trainer game. In the Rhythm Trainer game, the, the pictures I have up so far will take you through what I'm about to show you. And then we'll do the other stuff together. You have mmms. That would be like pie, pie, apple, mmm. Um, you might have pie, huckleberry, mmm, apple. The one thing I talked about in yesterday's lesson is to make sure that you look through it first, and then you count your way through it with the pies and the apples. You kind of speak your way through it. And then you add the clapping last. Never start with the clapping. So this top one, we would start off with pie, pie, apple, mmm. Then we add the clapping. Pie, pie, apple, mmm. This next one we would say pie, huckleberry, mmm, apple. And then we would add the clapping to it. Pie, huckleberry, mmm, apple. And you really got to aim for that rest anytime you see it. Because people like to go apple, they like to finish it out with pie, but there's no pie. It's apple, mmm, or huckleberry, mmm. So always think about these rests a little bit more than you do about the notes. So one crazy thing about sound is given the right conditions, you can cancel sound. Um, in any normal space, that's almost impossible to do, nearly impossible. Uh, but given uh, the closed... Uh, atmosphere of headphones. There are sound canceling headphones. I have a pair at home that I have that I really enjoy. Um, what it does is sound waves are compressions and decompressions. The cone pushes forward from the speaker and then it decompresses and pulls back. That's one cycle, one hertz. So what ends up happening is say this is one cycle. Sound canceling my headphones actually have a microphone, and they will listen, and they will pick up the frequencies that they hear, um, that they take in, and then they will offset it perfectly so that as you have 
compression, which is pressure decompression, which is the opposite. It pulls back, push forward, pull back of the speaker cone, really. Um, it offsets it to do this. And when you have these the same distance from the line, what it does is it cancels out the sound. Um, so in headphones, you can get some headphones that do that really well, never perfectly, but really, really well, um, to where you flip a little switch and suddenly everything outside the headphone seems to disappear, or almost disappear. It can be done in a very controlled studio space, given the right conditions and somebody who really knows what they're doing, um, to where I could be talking, and you just wouldn't hear anything. Um, so that's a pretty crazy thing. Uh, to wrap up today, we've done most of the things. Uh, we will revisit the Pout Pout Fish uh, the quick brown fox, and we're going to start taking steps out of that to really make you think more. Um, but the last thing I want to talk about is hearing loss. It's not a matter of if you have hearing loss, it's how much hearing loss do you have. Um, it's not recognized medically until you reach a certain point, kind of like vision. Um, it's all different degrees of loss. So I have some hearing loss, you have some hearing loss. The problem with hearing is as you get older, it doesn't heal. If you get cut on your skin, if you break a bone, those things heal, they mend. Um, but hearing does not really come back. It's You start here, and then over your life, it just goes down and down and down. Which is why I hope this scares you a little bit into thinking, gosh, I better take care of my hearing. Um, if you go to a concert, it's really loud. Um, if you're a loud firework or a gunshot, uh, you, have a, you could end up with a ringing in your ears. That's your ear trying to protect itself from the damage it just took. Um, that's called compressing the sound. It's trying to heal or, or protect itself uh, from further damage on whatever pitch or frequency hit it really hard. Um, so if you hear a ringing in your ears, it's your ear going, ouch, that hurt, and you just experience a hearing loss to some amount. Um, it's hard to notice when you're having hearing loss because it'll happen gradually over your life unless you have a big traumatic event, like a firework goes off of your ear. That's immediate <laughs> hearing loss. So it's going to happen incrementally over time, and you've really got to pay attention so that you don't let that creep up on you. Um, I have some other listening activities in the future which will actually test your hearing so we can check out what's going on with that. So um, check out yesterday's stuff. You don't have to watch all these videos if you're in class or if you're following along at home uh, via the Zoom meeting. Or, I'm sorry, Google Meet meeting. Um, but do keep up. If you know all these things, don't worry about it. Go live your life. Go frolic in the fields. If you don't know these things or they're new to you or you just feel like you better do a little bit of practice, go back to Music Elective Lesson 1 and check out those links. Practice those things. Spend five minutes. Just run through those things. Knock it out. Anyways, have a great day.